and Stephanie Beaumont coming to you from Cape Spear, Newfoundland. Well, thanks. And I mean, are you all with here? No. Well, let's pause for a moment and remember I'm in the back seat with Alan Hawke. Do you know that one that fired across the Yes, Steve. Yes, to land this Mr. Space. Walter Gretzky. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm thrilled standing beside you. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Take two. Oh, shit. Sure. 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 Just go ahead and pinch me. Go on now. Their craft has dated with 48-foot wooden schooners, the traditional kind. Hi, I'm Stephanie Beaumont. Welcome to See and Be Seen, the show that celebrates all the people, places, and things that make the four Atlantic provinces so very special. From Nova Scotia to New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island to Newfoundland and Labrador, we take you to where the action is. And on this very special edition, it's movie action we're after, because the East Coast is hopping when it comes to production. We're starting at the very first documented address in Chester, Address number one, and it's the property known as the Captain's House. It's been used in all kinds of television series and movies, including Two If By Sea, starring Sandra Bullock and Dennis Leary. I would like to have a house. I want kids. We talked about that. And I would like to see Italy. Is this one of those hormone things? It's like talking to a crosstown bus with you. Do you know what I'm wondering? I'm sitting here wondering, what do you have planned for the next seven years? It's been well over 17 years since that romantic comedy crew roamed the streets of Chester. The Seaside Village had the role of Rhode Island in that one, but before that production, and in many since, it's played the parts of places like Long Island and New Hampshire to Maine many times over. Speaking of Maine, who can forget Vera Donovan's sprawling mansion in Dolores Claiborne? Known in real life as the Jib House, it's currently on the market. That's cool. That's just Chester. I mean, Lunenburg, Mahone Bay, Wolfville, down to Yarmouth, all the way up to Cape Breton. Canada's Ocean Playground has served as a breathtaking background, and that's just Nova Scotia. We'll spend this show sharing fun film facts from all over Atlantic Canada and chat with the fine folks who are making movies for the big screen. From multi-award winning feature directors to those who shine with the shorts, we'll get tips on how to best tackle the process, salute the stars, and dole out some free stuff too. Indeed, there's lots on the playbill, so let's get to it. Starting with the writing team behind Beatdown. That's the movie that stars Republica Doyle's Martha Bernard and Rob Wells from the Trailer Park Boys. The movie shot in St. John's has gone on to rave reviews from coast to coast on this continent. It's an irreverent comedy about wrestling, family, and following your dreams, no matter how painful that can be. You may recall seeing director Deanne Foley in our premiere episode. It was during the most recent Atlantic Film Festival that I got the scoop on her most remarkable script. And the script you wrote with someone else? I wrote the script with uh, Ian McLeod, who is from New Glasgow. Come on in, Ian. <laughs> Ian's people wouldn't let him appear on camera. Come on in, Ian. I'm going to just scoo I'm gonna scooch him in. They're uh, not, not going to be happy about this. <laughs> they're going to be, or to put it another way, they're going to be unhappy. I tried to negotiate points on the back end, but apparently that wasn't good enough either. Yeah, we, we had trouble getting those ourselves, so uh, good luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ian McLeod. Okay, now, it seems odd that they both get along very well. Let's just scooch in. No, I, I, I feel, get along that come well, on, but. where's okay. your drink? It's, it's a good thing you're in between us. Is that true? Oh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Now, I know from the songwriting standpoint, because I did a little bit of the co-writes with myself, but you talk to songwriters, and there has to be a chemistry. Ian, there has to be that something. Is no, there, something? there isn't, though. This is the interesting <laughs> thing, because we don't have any. Is that and true? And it's still, it still seems to work. So, yeah. no, I disagree completely. All I don't right. think there needs to be chemistry. Good enough. There needs to be communication, though. Is it really email? Was that a phone? What was the... Um, well, we, we would see each other from time to time. Um, I, I would often go to Newfoundland a couple times a year and then uh, email, phone. And it's, uh, you know, it, it is easier and faster when you're in the same room, but it is possible uh, to write um, in different places and, yeah. and lots of people do it. So I, I don't really think that's too, too big of a challenge. Okay. Now, I, I asked the actors, uh, there's a great feature on the site, the 4x4 Smackdown, which sounded really great, but there was n nobody came to fisticuffs or anything. But what was the <laughs> one line of dialogue that you remember? Because it's been a while since you wrote it. And I can't remember. What did you say, Deanne? Um, I said action and cut. Oh, right. Because I didn't actually say, say that on but screen. What was your if you can think of the script the two of you wrote, and I'll ask you in a moment, Ian, so you can be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but not, not fair. This is not a fair contest. Um, 
Um, what What's my yeah, favorite? Like, or maybe not so much your favorite, but what's the one that sort of resonates? Is there in? Any? Well, there's a lot of lines that I can't say on camera because they have strong language. They're in them. colored. They're colorful. Colorful language. So I like a lot of those lines. Uh, Ian McLeod, your answer, sir. Uh, well, I'm actually going to reveal plot <gasps> with my favorite line. Uh, maybe it's wrong to lie to your daughter about her mother being dead. Maybe it's not. Who knows? <laughs> and I think it was actually Deanne. I might made have me, to go beep 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 yeah, beep this, beep beep or put a big spoiler this might be, alert. This right might along. be cut out. I might just spoiler alert right in front fair of you. Enough, now. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's good though. I think that'll be make for great television. Okay, I'm gonna give my line. Okay. Because you know I don't want Ian to like one up me. <laughs> so uh, these are drug dealers, Henry. It's not like going to Zellers. It's good. It's gold. Looking at the two of them, I know the first thing you think, wrestling. Uh, <laughs> but how did that happen? Like, I, how, did I, how did I become a wrestler? Yeah. Well, I guess I was, about, or I was about 14 and I just had a dream. And you just, I kept going down the dream road and that's where I ended up. So. It's the Ian, it's the Ian McLeod story. Is it? No. It, you've yeah. just replaced. I am an 18 year old girl, that's true. Um, Barkeep, we're going to need another round. Yeah. So great to chat with those two and so happy for all of their success. Speaking of which, the film was just declared an official selection for the third annual Beijing International Film Festival that takes place in April. And Deanne and Ian are back at it. They have a script in development with Pope Productions called I Hate Rich Kids. Hmm, we'll look forward to that. And we love their leading lady. You can catch Martha Bernard every Sunday night on Republica Doyle and on the big screen next in filmmaker Emily Bridger's new short. Here's Emily now with a piece we've entitled Location, Location, Location. Hi, my name is Emily Bridger um, and I'm here at the Grapevine on Water Street in St. John's, Newfoundland to talk about a film. I wrote and directed a short film this past fall called In So Many Words. It's a two-hander, which means there's just two actors. It's just one scene um, starring local veteran actor Steve Lush, who's wicked, and Martha Bernard, who you may recognize from Be Down, the feature film. We cast these two great actors, and we had a great crew lined up, but we needed one more thing, and that was sand. Sand was integral to this production, um, which is really, a really, really, really tricky thing to get in St. John's or in Newfoundland, really, in general. It's not like PEI. We have rocks. We have a ton of rocks called The Rock. It's not just a cute nickname, so. Martha and Duncan and I went on a quest for sand. Um, so we went to Middle Cove Beach. That's rocks. That's all rocks. Um, and we went around. I was Someone suggested to go to Kitty Vitty Lake. Um, which is like not the ocean and also uh, I don't think there's any sand and there's like a ton of ducks and stuff that was not the right fit. Um, so we kind of ventured outside the city. We thought of uh, Deer Lake actually because I was in Deer Lake this past summer and it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous sand, Deer Lake, Newfoundland, but it's like eight hours away so wouldn't like, yeah, wasn't in our budget to cart everybody out to Deer Lake, unfortunately. We ended up near Hans Harbor. Uh, Martha took us to this gorgeous beach, kind of, it was down over this cliff, and the beach was like white sand, it was like Jamaica, but it was down over a cliff. That was too dangerous to be, to be shooting and bringing camera equipment down there. Um, and then we went to another beach in Hearts Content, I think, or Hearts Delight, just outside, kind of around that area. That beach was like mostly rocks also. And then we went to Salmon Cove, or Salmon Cove Sands, maybe that's what it's called, and it was sand, and it's gorgeous, and it's the most perfect, glorious sand, and there was beautiful, like, rock formations out in the, out in the middle of the ocean, so we found, we found our beach. So we went there in October, it was a beautiful day, and we shot, and uh, we wrapped, and we came down here to the grapevine, and had some Kitty Vitty Iceberg Beer and had a few laughs and it was great. So now we're in the post-production stage. Um, we're hoping to finish up the editing and, and all that stuff within the next couple of weeks, hopefully within the next month. So hopefully we'll have something to show you that's complete very soon. Um, yeah, so thank you to CNBC and Stephanie for chatting with us and we'll be in touch soon.
Oh, they sure found a pretty spot. As did Oscar winner Daniel Day-Lewis for the movie The Ballad of Jack and Rose. Back in 2003, he was at Rock Bear Retreat on Prince Edward Island to film the movie. Famed for being method in his approach to every role, he actually helped build the sod-roofed home that still sits on the property today. No building required for the cast of five-time Academy Award-nominated film Children of a Lesser God. The 1986 release shot on location in Rothsay and St. John and Beaver Harbor, New Brunswick. The film starred Oscar winner William Hurt as James Leeds and newcomer Marley Matlin as Sarah, a role that earned her the Best Actress awards at both the Academy and the Golden Globes back in 1987, establishing her forever in the Hollywood star system. And who can forget that famous pool scene. Those were shot on location in the vocational high school in St. John. I love that movie. It was so romantic. The Atlantic Film Festival serves to foster that love of film and movie making through a really cool program called Viewfinders International Film Festival for Youth. Targeting kids from elementary all the way through to high school, kids in Halifax and the surrounding areas enjoy everything from hands-on media workshops with the industry's best to screening award-winning films from around the world. Celebrating its 12th season this spring, it is the coolest program around. For more info on that, visit www.atlanticfilm.com. All right, time for an intermission here on CNBC. But when we return with our Movie Makers Edition, we'll catch up with Kate Breton born writer and director Mike Melsky for the inside scoop on his latest release. What's it about? A job. She ran away from home when she was 15, and she fell in with very dangerous people. Please. Welcome back to CNBC. The year was 1932 and the day, May 20th, when Amelia Earhart made history, the very first transatlantic flight solo, mind you, by a female ever. Amelia Earhart took off from Harbor Grace, Newfoundland and Labrador. And here we are in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where back in 2009, Oscar winner Hilary Swank and the very handsome Richard Gere uh, took their position, if you will, right out there on the waters for the movie Amelia. Lots of people are quite taken with you. How can I lose? If you miss this island, you're out of fuel with 2,000 miles to go. I understand the danger. I can handle it. I'll go tell the world you're on your way. History portrayed there and history made here. For it was off the coast of Dartmouth, one of the biggest blockbusters of all time, James Cameron's Titanic was filmed. And we made a little history of our own back in the summer of 2011. CNBC got the scoop and broke the news first that Pierce Brosnan would play Mike Noonan in Stephen King's Bag of Bones. Check out our site for lots of coverage on that East Coast production. Hey, and a fella getting a ton of coverage these days is Sydney, Nova Scotia's own Michael Melsky. That kind of thing's bound to happen when your award-winning movie hits theaters. We caught up to the acclaimed writer and director at one of his favorite spots, Michael's Bar and Grill, to celebrate the release and talk about how he makes movies. Let's talk about the cruise, first of all, in Atlantic oh, Canada, yeah. because, I mean, that's kind of the mechanics. The If those people don't bring it, then you're pooched as a director, right? Oh, God. I, yeah. I've been so fortunate with my, with my crews and cast, but, wow, growing up was amazing. I had just an amazing team. Yeah, Charlie's own, same thing. Yeah. Um, both times we were making a movie much larger than the budget we had. The only way you can make that work is if the crew is on side with you. Yeah. I worked with Craig Cameron on both shoots. He's the line producer. Okay. He's a terrific guy. And uh, he knows that I, I like to cast the crew. It's something I, I learned from an interview I saw with Clint Eastwood. Oh. Where he doesn't just cast the actors, he, he casts the crew. He casts a personality type, a dynamic that, you know, when you're choosing your grips or your electrics or your production assistants that, you know, if you're making a comedy, you want people that are going to bring a certain vibe. If you're making an intense film like Charlie's Own, you want people that are going to bring a certain vibe and a certain skill set. Right. So crewing is, is as important as casting. And I've been lucky that I uh, got fortunate on both times that That's very neat. I, I cast a good crew. I don't know if I would crew. have thought about that. But that, that I cast a good crew and, and, they, and they delivered. I mean, they're, yeah. all, they're all heroes to me. Yeah. You're only as good as your crew. Yeah, well, there you go. Spoken like a true awesome director. There you have it. Growing up and Charlie's Own, maybe diametrically opposed, would you say, in terms of their, well, maybe not diametrically, yeah. but because they're both about really strong characters, but different in terms of their tone. Yes. Um, you know, I've often described Charlie's Own as the growing up's uh, dark twin brother. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in a way, um, 
they're actually quite alike thematically. They're both, they both involve, uh, you know, an identity quest. The main character is in a state of conflict right. about what home is and, and where his strength lies. You know, Quinn and growing up, you know, had this huge conflict with his, with his family and he was very dislocated culturally. And Avery in Charlie's Zone is certainly dislocated culturally as well. And in the end, home is the answer. The, the discovery of identity comes through, through roots and the courage, and that's where they find the courage to find redemption and freedom. So. Very cool. And now let's just talk about your home, um, mm -hmm. because you're a very proud Cape Bretner. Now, what was it like growing yes. up there for you, Mike Melsky? Well, I loved, I loved growing up in Cape Breton. I had a, I'm not one of those uh, uh, creative types that can say they had a lousy childhood. And, and blame it on that. Um, my parents were amazing. Yeah. My, uh, my late father introduced me to movies at a very young age and really inspired me and, and encouraged me to, to be a creator. And, uh, you know, his, his legacy is in everything I do. Yeah. And, you know, my mom, is, my mom is still alive and kicking, and she's amazing as well. And super proud, I bet. Yeah, and, I, you know, I had great friends. Okay, now a lot of people would say to themselves, Kate Breton, a uh, movie director, maybe not the easiest transition, mm. um, but how hard was it for you or how easy was it for you? What was that like? Well, I wouldn't say it was easy. No. It, no one ever believes you can do something until you actually go out and do it. Yeah. Uh, no one thought I could be a screenwriter until I wrote a screenplay. No one thought I could direct a film until I went and directed a couple of films and won some but awards. But you always believed it. Oh, always. Yeah. Um, That's half the battle though, Mike, right? It is. Yeah. 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 Um, so it was a, a long climb. I mean, no one gives you a million dollars without you proving yourself over and over again. Right. And luckily I did. All the years I spent, you know, writing those plays that never got produced, the things that ended up in drawers, yeah. you know, the screenplays that never got produced, right. and there were many of them, yeah, yeah. the TV series I developed that never got to air. Nothing is wasted, because you learn from everything that you, that even things that don't get produced. Yeah. You learn from the, you know, the kicks in the ass you get. I mean, I loved what Ben Affleck said in the Oscars. Like, you know, we all get knocked down, right. and you just have to keep getting up. And I retweeted that. I thought that I was know. So cool. I was. I. I, yeah. I loved it. I like. You could see that guy had a a huge journey. Yeah. And in my own small Canadian maritime way. Yeah. You know, I've had, I've been kicked down, and yeah. I'm. I've gotten up, and and, you know, it gets. You get a little bit more respect every time you stand up. People are like, okay, you know, he's, he's here. He's paid his dues. He's for real. Ah, uh, huge respect there. And you know, one fellow that's had his fair share of ups and downs is Des Courtney. In real life, however, the Republic of Doyle star that...